When Concord made its final flight in 2003, it seemed that the era of supersonic passenger travel was over forever. The loud symbol of engineering audacity has given way to quieter, more fuel-efficient aircraft. However, humanity's thirst for speed has not faded. People still dream of reducing the travel time on board intercontinental flights. And now a new contender has appeared on the horizon, the XB-1, nicknamed Baby Boom, which promises to not only bring back supersonic speeds, but also make them sustainable and affordable. So what is this miracle of technology? And most importantly, when will we be able to ride on it? We'll be covering that right now. Since the time of Chuck Yeager, who accelerated his Bell X-1 to a speed faster than sound, humanity's begun to not only fly, but to rapidly overcome boundaries that until recently seemed to literally be against the laws of physics, not simply engineering. Consider this. Breaking the sound barrier is not so much an acceleration to a crazy speed as a rendezvous with a whole bunch of new problems. Sharp pressure surges, monstrous air resistance, extreme heating of the plane's skin, shock waves, and of course those sonic booms that can shake the earth for dozens of miles. So once engineers challenged physics in addition to the problems listed above, they also encountered economic, environmental, and political realities. Not to mention that the public was very unhappy with the scary sounds high in the sky that could blow out the windows of their homes and cars. Therefore, despite their technological maturity, supersonic passenger aircraft have not yet become a mass phenomenon. In the 1970s, two projects tried to become pioneers. The Soviet Tu-144 was a complete failure, but the British-French Concorde held its own, making some 6,500 commercial flights at speeds in excess of Mach 2, or 1,330 miles per hour, at altitudes up to 60,000 feet. But as you know, kings don't stay on the throne forever. After a long hiatus of two decades, in an era when familiar forms are becoming obsolete faster than airports are being built, it's not the aviation giants that are increasingly taking the stage, but rather small startups inspired by the principles of flexibility and innovation. Boom Technology is one such startup. The team, which gathered in Denver back in 2014, successfully participated in the Y Combinator Startup Incubation Program in early 2016, and by 2019 had managed to attract hundreds of millions of dollars for their dream project, the supersonic airliner Overture. But it would be strange to jump straight into the deep end, so the first step on the path to Overture was the supersonic demonstrator aircraft Boom XB-1, also known as Baby Boom. Externally, the XB-1 resembles a miniature Concorde with a few key differences. First of all, the size. After all, this is a single-seat aircraft designed for testing, not for carrying passengers. Instead of a spacious cabin, there's room for one pilot, a telemetry system, cooling, sensors, data recorders, and other smart insides. And although the length of the baby boom is controversial, since in official sources it's 62.6 feet, and in Wikipedia and some more recent media articles it's 68 feet, in any case, it's much inferior to its legendary colleague the Concorde with its 202 feet. The XB-1's wingspan is also much smaller, 21 feet versus 84 feet for the Concorde. But let's not forget that we're talking about a baby boom. The Overture will be much more impressive, 201 feet long with a 106-foot wingspan. Another thing that catches the eye when first looking at the XB-1 is the absence of Concorde's sloping nose. The boom demonstrator does not rely solely on cameras to provide its pilot with a view. It features a traditional glass cockpit that provides the usual forward view. However, due to the elongated geometry of the nose and the high cockpit position, the prototype does use auxiliary cameras for taxiing and ground operations, expanding the pilot's view downwards and to the sides. Additionally, eliminating the nose shaping mechanism allowed the Boom Technology team to maintain a simpler, lighter design, avoiding unnecessary complexity and providing excellent handling both in flight and on the ground. And to ensure that the body was not only lightweight, but also heat resistant, taking into account the operating temperatures at supersonic speed, lightweight composites including carbon fiber, stainless steel, and titanium were chosen as the main components for the XB-1. The tail section was 90% titanium and only 10% A286 stainless steel alloy. Intermediate modulus carbon fiber epoxy was used for the glider, with high modulus fibers for the wing spar caps and brisme malide prepreg for the high temperature leading edges and ribs. 
For materials, the Baby Boom team gave a huge thanks to Dutch-based 10K Advanced Composites, which provided everything needed for the leading edges and nose, which need to withstand over 307 degrees Fahrenheit, as well as epoxy materials for the cooler parts of the demonstrator. The XB1 is powered by three General Electric J8515 afterburning turbofan engines, producing over 12,900 pounds of thrust, a speed of Mach 2.2, and a range of over 1,200 miles. We've previously encountered such engines in the Northrop F5 supersonic light fighter family and the T-38 Talon supersonic jet trainer aircraft also from Northrop. Interestingly enough, the initial configuration of Baby Boom corresponded to the team's magnum opus, the Overture airliner. However, it was soon decided that the future passenger aircraft would receive not three but four engines installed in four large external nacelles instead of two more compact engine box nacelles. And not the J-85, but Boom Technologies' own development, created jointly with specialists from GE Additive, Standard Aero, and Florida Turbine Technologies, the Symphony engine. Its total thrust will now be more than 140,000 pounds, which will allow Overture to maintain super cruise at Mach 1.7 and altitudes up to 60,000 feet, providing a range of 4,250 miles. But Boom Technologies' main interest was also to please all the commissions and authorities concerned about the aircraft's environmental friendliness while minimizing the burden on the pockets of future consumers. Therefore, Symphony will provide 10% lower operating cost, will be 100% compatible with sustainable aviation fuel, has ICAO, International Civil Aviation Organization, Chapter 14 noise levels, and will be FAA, Federal Aviation Administration, Part 33 ESA CSE compliant. According to the company, the mass distribution of such passenger hypersonic airliners will make it possible to fly 500 or more routes daily. For example, at a speed of Mach 1.7 over water, a flight from Newark, New Jersey to London will take no more than three and a half hours, and from there to Frankfurt about four hours. But with a flight range of 4,500 nautical miles, Overture's Trans-Pacific flights will require refueling, although the fact that you can fly from San Francisco to Tokyo in just six hours is impressive. As for the price of the aircraft, it'll be around $200 million which is quite a lot considering the comparable price tag on American sixth-generation fighters of the Next Generation Air Dominance program, but those who want to are already lining up. From around 2016 through 2022, Boom Technology has announced 146 pre-orders for Overture from Japan Airlines, United Airlines, American Airlines, and other customers who wish to remain anonymous. And to ensure that the company can meet its ambitious goal of bringing 1,000 to 2,000 aircraft to market over the next 10 years, it's built its Overture Super Factory in Greensboro, North Carolina, which is designed to assemble up to 100 airliners per year. One of the most unexpected partners of Boom Technology, which is targeting the commercial sector, was Northrop Grumman, which was announced in the summer of 2022. Thus, according to official press releases, the U.S. military and its allies will soon also be provided with brand new supersonic Overture special purpose aircraft, including the delivery of medical supplies, providing emergency medical care, and monitoring vast areas many times faster than any conventional aircraft. Testing of the XB-1 began in December of 2022. It made its maiden flight in March of 2024, and in January of this year, Baby Boom became the world's first private non-military jet to break the sound barrier, thus marking an important step in the development of commercial supersonic aviation. Naturally, there were some symbolic steps involved as the transition to supersonic speed was accomplished in the same legendary Bell X-1 supersonic corridor where Chuck Yeager once performed this trick for the first time. Without leaving the cash register, in February 2025, the XB performed its second supersonic flight, after which it was decommissioned with all efforts focused on the future overture. The first such aircraft, according to Boom Technology CEO Blake Scholl, will be seen in 2026. A year later, the team intends to conduct the first flight of the airliner, and after passing all the necessary FAA certification procedures, in 2029-2030, the first passengers will be able to enjoy an unforgettable view of the curvature of the Earth at an altitude of 60,000 feet looking out the windows of Overture. The ticket price for the innovative plane may justifiably shock some of you about $5,000. But when you compare this to the appetites of Concorde, which required $12,000, or about $21,000 today, taking inflation into account, 
you do realize that even the most advanced technologies have become more accessible over the years, and this is only a good thing. Do you think the Boom Team will be able to prepare the first Overture flights by 2030, or is this still too ambitious of a goal? Share your guesses in the comments below the video, and if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Yeah. <laughs>